Well, there's nothing like waking up to the smell of penetrating fluid and a little coffee in the garage. Uh, today's going to be fun, dude. We got a big project ahead of us today. You think we can get this all done today? I hope so. I hope so. Well, we're going to at least get as much as we can. In this video, we're going to be lifting my son's 2006 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. We got all kinds of cool stuff here, and we got some new wheels and tires that we're going to throw on. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad and this is my son Jordan and behind us is his 2006 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon TJ that you have been waiting to lift ever since you got it but because of current world events things have been delayed but now we're finally ready to do it. We've got all the parts. It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, it's going to be awesome once it's, it's all done. It's going to be a lot of work though. Are you ready to turn some wrenches? Yeah, okay. I've been ready. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're super excited about it. Uh, before we get started, why don't you talk to these guys a little bit about some of the stuff you've acquired uh, for this project. So I got the Skyjacker 4-inch lift, okay. got the Adams drive shaft, and a few other like steering things. But Yeah, we got a drop pitman arm, we've got adjustable uh, control arms, and then Icon, uh, did us a set of custom remote reservoir shocks, which yeah. uh, we might have to do a little finagling, but those will be really nice to have uh, on there. And then most importantly, I mean, well, maybe not most importantly, but I know the one thing you're super excited about is about what's in the corner over there. Yeah. What's in the corner over there? Uh, new wheels and tires. New wheels and tires. It's gonna make this Jeep look so nice. We were doing a little bit of mock-up yesterday, uh, big smiles on our face, but we're gonna save that till the end of the video uh, because it's kind of like the icing on the cake. So I think we're, uh, we're ready to get started. We're hopefully, we can, fingers crossed, we can get the front done today and then at least get the back done or started. We'll see, but uh, you're gonna be doing most of the work, dude because you gotta learn about your Jeep. That's important, so let's get started. We did take some initial measurements so we can see at the end just how much extra clearance we gained. And at the front fender, we were at 32 and three quarters of an inch. At the center of the Jeep, we were just under 19 inches. And at the rear fenders, we were at 33 and five eighths, give or take. So we'll see how much clearance we gained at the end of the video. All right, Jordan's on the other side jumping in and he's gonna start removing the front shocks. And as we get into this, I just wanna let you guys know that this is not gonna be a full-on step-by-step video because look, uh, the TJ has been around since 1998 and there is plenty of resources and videos out there that talk about this process. I just thought it'd be fun just to hang out in the garage today, share our experiences with you. I'm sure we're gonna run into some challenges. I mean, look, this is an old Jeep. It's gonna have some problems. Uh, but it's super important that Jordan install this himself because because that way, when he is out on the trail, if something goes wrong, he knows how to fix it, or at least has familiarity with the suspension. You know, you could take this to a shop and spend, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks to have somebody install it, but then you don't really get familiar with your suspension. And so, look, this is going to be a big project. This is going to take us at least a day, maybe two days to get this done. But the reward is one, he's going to get the satisfaction of knowing he did this himself, and two, he's going to be much more knowledgeable about his suspension. All right, let's go uh, watch and see what he's doing. Jordan started making quick work of removing the front shocks, which thankfully came out without a hitch. It's the rear shocks that sometimes are notorious for being difficult because the upper bolts like to snap off. We actually experienced that when we did the XJ lift a few years ago. Thankfully, we didn't encounter any issues removing any of the TJ's shocks. Next, Jordan started taking off the lower track bar bolts and we'll be doing some mild modifications to this here in just a little bit. Then he removed the sway bar end link and I started on the drop pitman arm. All right, so we gotta pull the pitman arm off and uh, my pitman arm puller that we used on the XJ several years ago is actually too small. So I'm gonna have to run to the auto parts store and get that, but my buddy Eric just showed up and so him and Jordan are going to start working on a couple other things while I'm on my way to the store. So I will be back because we've got to get this pit in our mouth. It's always great to have friends that love to help out and turn wrenches. And when you're doing a big project like this, the more hands the better, I say. One safety comment here I want to mention. If you are working with jack stands, please use caution. We try to avoid climbing underneath the Jeep when it's on stands. And we will often throw the floor jack or some blocks or some wheels and tires underneath just in case. Okay, so I just got back. I was only gone for 30 minutes, Jordan. You guys already knocked out quite a bit of stuff. What have you done so far? Uh, so we got the sway bars mostly off. Um, this one's still pretty stuck in there. I mean, we've been hammering it, maybe blasting it. Um, we got the springs out, um, pulled the bump stops, put the extensions on. So, yeah, 
Man, I should go to the store more often. You guys knocked it out of the park. Now it's your turn to work. <laughs> yeah, I know. I gotta get that Pittman arm off. <laughs> The sway bar end link needed a little extra motivation to come off, and thankfully, we won't be reusing it. Hey! Nailed it! it just takes a bigger hammer. It works. <laughs> now time to tackle the Pitman arm, and in my experience, Pitman arms are hit or miss. Sometimes they come off with no problems, and sometimes they don't. This one wasn't interested in coming off at all. After it breaks, it'll it'll be great. Yeah, it just needs to. It just needs to pop. Just needs it to. Just needs to have so much pressure on it that it seems out of where it's at. All right, so Pittman arms are always fun, uh, but this got a little sketchy here. So we we were on there straight. We we're torquing it down. Uh, the Pittman arm was not coming off. It's actually keyed inside there. It was not coming off, and you can see the little ends here started to flex up, and they're not supposed to do that. So. I have to give a little brainstorm here and figure out how the best way to get this thing off. We tried repositioning and working that Pitman arm puller a few more times, but it just didn't want to break it loose. We even tried some love taps to see if we could break it loose just a little bit. But one recommendation here, do not smash your Pitman arm with a lot of force because you'll actually damage the steering box. All right, so we tried a couple of options and we're kind of back to the Pitman arm puller, but what's happening is right here, the metal on the Pitman arm uh, polar is starting to slide off and so this is no longer this is no longer gonna work we were trying to give it some taps and some PB blaster uh, but she's just giving us a hard time so Eric ran to the store to get a new pitman arm puller and we'll come back to that in a minute let's talk about the springs so here's a little side-by-side -side comparison of the front springs get the new ones which are taller and a little bit thicker and more tightly wound uh, we're gonna have to use not my favorite tool but we're gonna use a spring compressor because we're just going to have to compress those just a hair just so we can get them to fit up in there. Uh, taking our time, going slow, uh, but you can see these are definitely going to add uh, some definite lift to the Jeep. Okay, so I'm breaking a little bit of a sweat here. Uh, I've been a lot of a breath, but getting this spring on was a handful. We tried doing it with the spring compressors, but it just kept getting hung up on everything. And so with a crowbar, and uh, pushing the other side of the axle all the way up and just manhandling it. And uh, a little bit of motivation here from the peanut gallery, uh, which probably gonna have some lunch, so I'm gonna go eat some lunch here in a second. We got this spring in, now we just gotta figure out how to get this one on the other side. Okay, so we've been fighting this a little bit and we needed the spring compressors to get it up in here the problem is, is now we're hitting stuff, and so we're gonna kind of do what we did on the other side, which I didn't show you, which is, I'm gonna take the spring compressors off now, and then I think what we can do is just start spinning the coil, and it will actually work its way up around the lip of this. It's actually what we did on the other side, and then we'll just get a crowbar and manhandle it. But uh, I don't wanna manhandle it with the uh, spring compressors on here, because this thing just makes me nervous. Come on, baby, get out of here. That's going up. See, that's it. You just needed the touch. Eric's got the touch. I didn't have the touch. Just keep going in. I hope so. That's probably about all you're going to get there, huh? Okay. All right. Let me, let me move in. This should be fun. Let's see. I need to get something to bite on. Get it. Well, I think after manhandling this for about 10 minutes, I think Eric and I both agreed we need to get back in the gym. So we put on the spring compressors and this made it slip right over the perch. We should have just done that in the first place, but you know, you always gotta try to brute force it first. But thankfully it was on now. Thanks for doing all the work for me. Uh-huh. It's your Jeep, dude, you're next. Start moving your control arms off. <laughs> I'm, gonna sit back. I'm gonna sit back and watch you do that, buddy. I'm, I'm chilling now. Is it tomorrow on Father's Day? <laughs> yeah, but that's tomorrow. I'm supposed to be relaxing. All right, so back to the Pitman arm. Eric went and uh, grabbed the new one, and we believe that this one is better. 
we're, we're just being optimistic. Um, we are going to uh, heat up the Pittman arm, hopefully to make, help it expand just a little bit. Uh, and then we'll put the, the polar on there and fingers crossed, second time's a charm. Straight. Yeah, straight from this end. Okay, well, even the new polar was no match for this pitman arm. So, we had to go to the last resort. Time to break out the grinder. Always okay to stop and check. Yeah, really close right there. That's probably as close as I want to get. On look, the bottom? Look at the bottom. Yeah, that's why I wanted to stop and check. That's probably as close as I want to go. I made two cuts into the pitman arm and cut down just before we reached the threads of the shaft. You have to have a steady hand here. You do not want to cut the steering box if you're going to do this. Maybe it'll just pop. I mean, you know, the good thing is we just put a ton of heat in it. To it. Yeah, just yeah, broke. Yeah, there it goes, baby. <laughs> it just broke. Yay! It's a good thing we don't need this pin in our anymore, baby. <laughs> you okay that we just cut it all up? Yeah, I don't care. All right. Those two small cuts were just enough to allow it to release off the shaft. And the other end of the pitman arm, thankfully, just popped right off. So much easier. Yeah, I just need leverage. Okay, so Eric's just putting in the new pitman arm, and uh, it's actually really easy to do. It's actually keyed, and there's a little dimple in there that lines everything up. Uh, the whole reason for doing the drop pitman arm is because we're lifting the vehicle, and so this will bring the steering geometry back to normal. Now, we're eventually going to replace a tie rod and drive link, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to put everything back to stock, but this, uh, this was a pain. It was such a pain. <laughs> While Eric was installing the new pitman arms, Jordan was making quick work of the front lower control arms. But our struggles were not over. We didn't foresee the next challenge coming, but more on that here in a second. All right, so uh, Jordan got some very beefy control arms and they are adjustable. And so what we need to do is do a measurement here. It should be from the center of the eye to the center of the eye. It should be 16 and a sixteenth, and I'm just a little bit over. That is, I think that's pretty good right there. All right, dude, go install this bad boy. The new rear passenger lower control arm was in place with just a slight tug on the axle to get it to all line up. However, the old driver's side rear control arm, I think it must have been friends with the pitman arm because the lower cam bolt was not interested in coming out. So I feel like I say this almost every time we do an install, but sometimes it's just the little things that are the biggest challenge. And so Jordan was removing the control arm here, got the upper bolt and nut out, and then the lower one, it has a cam bolt on it. Uh, and we got it loose, we got the nut off of it, but we cannot get the bolt out. And so we've been fiddling with this for about 10 minutes now, but we're gonna get it. Okay, so I haven't turned the camera on for about the last 45 minutes because we have been trying to figure out how to get this cam bolt out of there. The problem is on the lower control arm, there's a sleeve inside the bushing. And every time that we turn the cam bolt, the bolt's in there, the whole sleeve turns. So it's almost like it's rusted or fused to that internal sleeve. And we have tried heat. We've tried uh, a ton of penetrating oil. We've hammered the heck out of it. We've tried a seat clamp. We've tried, I, I don't know, Eric. I think we've tried it all, buddy. So I think our next option is to cut it. The only problem is, is this is a special cam bolt and we'd have to wait for it to come in the mail because we've already called the local auto stores and they are not here. So we're taking a break for a minute and we're going to kind of regroup and just figure out what the next move is. I'm free. You're done. You're done. That's going to be hot. Okay, so we finally got the control arm out, and this took about almost two hours. Let me just show you what's going on here. So this is the bolt that was in here. We actually had to cut it out. This is the cam bolt, but it was fused All right. to this sleeve yep. right here. And so there was just no getting it out. You can see the other one just came right out. This one just didn't want to do it. We used up a couple blades to get it out, but they got the new one in, and we have a cam bolt on order, which means 
This won't be drivable this weekend, but it will be here soon. Okay, well, we knew we might have had some challenges, but it's been a pretty interesting day. We're, what, about seven hours into this? And yeah. just about done. We still got to put the shocks on the front, and then you ordered that cam bolt, so we don't know how long it's going to be till that gets here. But, guys, we're going to call it a day uh, because we actually have some company, and I'm uh, going to go enjoy the day. And then tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to get back at this, and we're going to finish the rear, hopefully. hopefully, and at least get that done, get the tires mounted. Uh, you can drive around the block, but you can't go anywhere until we get that cam bolt, and then just got to get everything in line. Anyway, mm. what a day. Yeah. Yeah. Two hours on a bolt. Two hours on a bolt was nuts. Thank Eric, thank you, buddy. Appreciate your help today, man. You are a godsend, dude. Anytime, guys. All right. Well, guys, uh, we'll see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning. It's day two. Uh, yesterday was uh, it was interesting. You learned a lot about your Jeep, though, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it was a little bit more work than I expected. I mean, you always expect some challenges, but uh, that pitman arm, uh, that cam bolt, holy cow! I mean, the springs are always you know those are always a challenge. You're always going to come into some challenges, but I think, fingers crossed, uh, we're over the hump, right? So the front, what we need to do uh, today is we need to drill a hole for the track bar and then uh, install the springs, and we'll figure out the remote reservoir where we want to mount those later on. Mm -hmm. um, then we'll get the Jeep back out on some tires, flip it around, and uh, get started on the back. And the back, look, I've done a few lift kits. The back is almost always easier, but, I, but uh, after yesterday, I'm scared to say that a little bit, but I think we're gonna be finished today. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right, ready to get started? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The front track bar needs to be relocated three quarters of an inch towards the center to keep the alignment correct. So Jordan drilled out the new holes and then I got to work putting the new pins in the shocks. Having a press and a little bit of WD-40 no here up. comes in handy in getting these guys pressed in. Yay. We are finally to a point where I let Jordan take over for a little bit. He put on the shocks, the new sway bar end links, and he buttoned up that track bar and then just went around and did a good nut and bolt check of everything we had already done. And finally, the front end was finished. I don't know, Jordan, I kinda like the front end lifted like that. Kinda looks like a little pre-runner. Yeah, no. No? No. So Jordan's down here just kinda double checking all the bolts uh, before we turn the Jeep around and start on the rear. And we were talking off camera, and I just want to let everybody know, we're having a blast. Uh, even though we've encountered a few frustrations, we're not mad. There haven't been things flying and cuss words going. We're just trying to find ways to fix problems, to overcome these challenges. It's been fun. And so I think if you're going to do this kind of stuff in the garage, one, you should because you get to know your Jeep so much better. But two, you need to know that there's going to be things that come along the way that you're going to have to sort out and figure out. And sometimes that's part of the fun process. We're having a great time and, uh, and we're, we're so close to being done. The rear should not take very long. I've had lots of folks ask if we would clear the garage door with the lift tires and rack. And after all was said and done, we still had about two inches of room. The good news is you can always drop your tire pressure to squeeze a good inch out or two out if you need to. I do it with the Gladiator when the rooftop tent is on there all the time. Thankfully, the rear took us about half the time as the front did. So we quickly dove in and started removing the shocks. The sway bar links, which are plastic by the way, no complaints saying goodbye to those. Then disconnected the rear track bar, removed the springs, swapping out the control arms. Finally, we could start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, so the rear control arms are out and these are the new ones and we just need to measure. They're supposed to be from center of eye to center of eye, 16 and a 16th. So we'll measure those, then put the locking nut on and then get those installed. And here's an example of the old spring. And the new spring, definitely a lot more clearance, but right now we've got to get the new bump stops installed and, uh, and get that track bar bracket installed. All right, we've run in uh, to two little hiccups. So the bump stops and the supplied bolts are, well, the bump stops are too long or the bolt is too short, one or the other. So we're gonna shave off about a quarter of an inch of the bump stop, which is gonna be fine, it's not gonna be a big deal, but that's something we have to do. These are plastic, so it's gonna be quick and easy. The other thing is, we were looking at the track bar relocation bracket and trying to sort that out. The picture is, it's okay, it gives us a little bit of reference, uh, but there are not all the bolts supplied in the bag. And so I've had to break into my 
uh, bolts bin back here and kind of figure this out. And so I showed Jordan how to do this, but I thought, you know what, let me bring the camera in. Let me just show you how this all gets put together just in case you happen to be putting together this exact uh, track bar relocation bracket. All right, so this is the track bar relocation bracket, and it's going to go on the track bar bracket like this. And then this bolt, which is the original bolt, there was supposed to be a new bolt, but it's not there. So we're going to use the original. It goes through the original hole using this sleeve, so you have to hold that in there. And then that will bolt in loosely. Now, after that's set up, that aligns the, this hole, which allows us an opportunity to drill a half-inch hole. We'll use this as our guide, but then drill it through the actual current bracket. And then once that's drilled through, we can take this bolt out. We will put this small bolt in here, which, and then put the nut on the back, like so. Then put the original bolt, sleeve, nut, back through there. And then the actual track bar will now go through this upper section using a new supplied bolt, which was not in the kit, but thankfully I have one. And when it's all said and done, it will look something like this on the Jeep, just with the track bar a little bit higher. And that just kind of helps with the geometry a little bit. So there you go. Hopefully that's helpful if uh, anybody is doing this project. That was easy. I told you the rear was going to be easier in the front. All right, so Jordan uh, just installed the sway bar end link on this side and he's working on the other side. I've got the shock loosely mounted over there. I'm gonna get it loosely mounted over here. The thing that we'll have to figure out is the reservoirs on the front and rear. We might have to get a little creative, but so far just test fitting, everything should be fine. Uh, they just may not be the same on either side on how they're mounted, but it's gonna be a pretty nice setup when it's all said and done. Once we were finished and everything was bolted down, we slapped on the old wheels and tires just so Jordan could test drive it in this configuration before mounting the new wheels and tires. We're almost done. But are your Jeep's tall? Yeah. What do you think? I really want to see what the wheels and tires now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it looks really good. What a lot of work though. Yeah. It was fun though, right? You yeah. learned a lot about your Jeep? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, what we need to do is, one, you just need to go drive around the block, mm -hmm. okay, just to kind of get a feel for it. Bring it back in here. We need to go get some red Loctite because I'm actually out. Mm -hmm. And so then we can uh, put the uh, converters on to go from a 4.5 to a 5, right? So these new wheels and tires will fit. That's another hint, so we're not going with the same lug pattern. Uh, we still have to do the cam bolt and the drive shaft, but maybe we can do that later in the week. So let's just go... Go take it around the block. Let's put these wheels and tires on it. Let's call this video and show these guys what it's finally going to look like. Sounds good. Okay. All right, dude, what's the verdict? How to drive? Uh, the steering wheel's off, but it's actually a lot more like 
softer than I was expecting. So now a little smoother ride maybe? Yeah, a little smoother. Okay, well we can fix the steering wheel, that's no problem. Oh, that's not off that much. All right guys, we got the shock reservoirs all secured. It actually looks pretty clean. We've got the wheel uh, spacer slash conversions on there and Jordan, drum roll. There you go, buddy. Look at that. Yeah, look good. What do you got there? Um, so they're the vector wheels from Icon Alloys. Uh, they're bronze, um, 17 inch, and then we got the BFG all terrains. And I'm actually really excited about them. Why did you get the all terrains? Um, I do a lot of freeway driving. Um, they're supposed to be quiet on the road, according to you. And <laughs> I think they look pretty good. They look good? They're going to be smooth. It's going to be a smooth ride. Yeah, I and, hope so. And you know what? I've been all over Colorado, Moab, and all terrains. They're going to serve you just well. Great in the desert, too. So yeah. mount those things up, man. Let's go. <laughs> I want to see them on there. So we made an assumption and we were wrong about the tire carrier. So this is the tire carrier we recently installed and it has uh, different bolt patterns for your spare tire. Well, we thought we would just move these up to this space and it would probably fit a five on five. I mean, it's for a Jeep, right? Well, no, it's actually like five and a quarter. It's something probably in millimeters. Anyway, we're gonna have to order another lug conversion spacer to make this all work, but no big deal, but no, space, uh, no spare tire going on today. These tires are a 33 by 12.5 R17, and while I think someday he may upgrade to 35s, these are gonna be perfect for him as a daily driver and for hitting the trails here in Southern California. But I'll say we were both a little shocked by the weight increase. So stock wheels and tires, 68 pounds. So how much do you think the new ones weigh? Yeah, I'm gonna say 74. Ooh, maybe not, maybe a lot more. <laughs> oh yeah, they're heavier, dude. 80? 91. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't think they were gonna be that much heavier. And lastly, the final measurements. Originally, we were at 32 and three quarters at the front fender, and now we're at 38 and a quarter. I think there's a bigger increase in the front just because it takes that rake out. The center went from 19 to 23 and a quarter, and the rear went from 33 and 5 eighths to 38 and a quarter. There will be some settling, I'm sure, over the next month or so, but the overall increase is great, and this adds some significant clearance to this trail Jeep. So that was two full days of hard work, but I think it's paid off. It's totally worth it. Yeah? Yeah. What do you like best? Uh, the wheels and tires. They're like really good, don't they? they? The bronze with the red, man, I think that was, you know, that's an awesome combination. I yeah, really, I really like it. It looks really good. And it just, the whole Jeep just looks so much more aggressive now. Four inch lift. You're gonna have so much more clearance out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, you gain quite a bit of clearance with the lift, just a little bit with the tires, mm -hmm. but I think you're gonna be very happy with this wheel and tire combination. Yes, yeah, I'm so. super excited yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't wait, man. Unfortunately, you're not driving at home uh, tomorrow back to work, no. so we're gonna leave it here in the garage until we can get that cam bolt. We're still gonna get the drive shaft installed. Uh, we still have brake lines, mm -hmm. and we can even get a full alignment and all that kind of stuff, but just driving around the neighborhood, pretty happy with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. That's a wrap, guys. The next time you will see this Jeep, is that on a trail? Gonna go hit a trail? Oh yeah. We're gonna go hit a trail and uh, maybe do a little camping, have some fun, let him put this whole thing to work. It should be a good time. I hope you have enjoyed hanging out with us for the last two days here in the garage. If you are new to the Trail Recon, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.